An inside tip for our intrepid listeners. If you ever see a help vaunted sign in our window, ignore it. Know that we're not hiring only because our staff has been the same for untold years, and that this sign is just a clever ruse by our cooks to lure the unwary into the kitchens. The only help they want is gathering fresh ingredients for the larder. <laughs> Your reservation is always good here, friends, and your table is waiting for you. As you are no doubt aware, we have spent the month carefully seasoning and garnishing a choice creepypasta for your listening pleasure, and we are pleased to offer it to you this evening as our specialty of the night. We have told you stories of disappearances before, and the strange and bizarre circumstances around them. These usually happen to individuals. But what about an entire town? Hmm? Sometime during the night of August 16, 1952, the small town of Ashley, Kansas, ceased to exist. In the days leading up to the disappearance of the town and its 679 residents, bizarre and unexplainable events were reported by dozens of residents in Ashley and law enforcement from the surrounding area. Hey Pete, just letting you know, I'm headed home. Calling in a night early, Alan? Yeah, I got the okay from the chief. It's Maisie's birthday and I promised her that daddy would be home tonight for dinner and cake, whatever she wanted. <laughs> Good to hear. And don't let me hold you up then. Tell Maisie I wish her a happy birthday, too. Thanks, Pete. Can't even believe she's turning eight. I'll get it. And no, I got it. You're practically out the door as is. It's okay. I can take a quick call before I go. Too late. Uh, Hayes Police Department. Uh, howdy. I want to report, uh... Well, I'm not sure what to call it. Who am I speaking to, sir? Oh, sorry. Gabriel Jonathan. Thank you. What can I do for you, Mr. Jonathan? Well, it's the Dondest thing. I'm looking out my window right now, and I see this thing in the sky. I can't make heads or tails of it. Uh, just to confirm, where are you calling from? From my house on Fillmore Street, in Ashley. Can you describe to me what you're seeing, sir? That's just the thing. I'm really not sure what I'm looking at. Please, be as detailed as possible. Well, it's almost like... It's like this small black opening in the sky. That's the best way I can put it. Okay, sir, and has this... Thing done anything that might cause you harm? No, it's in one place. That's why it looks like a hole to me. I moved around outside to see if I could, you know, see around it, but it's just stuck there. Can still see it even though it's dark out now. It's darker than the sky around it. Well, sir, unless the object you're describing is proving to be a danger to yourself and others, we can't do much about it. Nope, but it's definitely strange. Can't you at least send someone over to look at it? I know you fellas are a town away, but this thing... It's worth looking at. You think it's aliens? I'm thinking it's aliens. I'll see if I can send someone over. I'll need your full address. Can do. It's 334 Fillmore Street. How soon can you send someone? As soon as possible. For now, stay in your home and wait for the officer to come to you. Thank you. I'll do that. You're welcome. What was that? Some sort of wild animal? Nah, it sounds like the guy on the other end is being spooked by a UFO. I'll get the chief to send a car over and make him feel better. <laughs> A UFO, huh? Yeah, it's probably just a weather balloon or something. Well, good luck with that. Two in one night, huh? Maybe he wasn't the only one to see this thing. You need me to stay? Nah, Alan, get going. You can't be too serious. Uh, good morning? Howdy, Alan. Am I late to the party? Seems a mite busy. <laughs> You're not gonna believe it. Dozens of calls this morning, all of them from Ashley. Is it serious? Hard to say. Every call is like the first one last night. With folks seeing a black thing in the sky, apparently people are still seeing it, only... Only what, Pete? Only they're saying it's getting bigger. Alan, glad you're here. Hope Maisie enjoyed her birthday. That she did, Chief. Thanks for the night off. Well, you can show your gratitude by driving over to Ashley and finding out what the hell's got everyone so jittery. 
You haven't sent anyone over yet? Oh, no, we didn't bother. It was just a couple of calls last night. But it sounds like it's serious, and I want you to check it out. No, verify it. Verify what these people are reporting. All right. What have we been telling the callers in the meantime? Just to stay put, not go outside or travel unless absolutely necessary. Uh, But the calls keep coming. Right, right. I'll be out straight away. I don't know how serious this is, but radio dispatch if anything goes wrong. We'll have someone on it. Okay, Chief. I'll be back with a report. should have been an Ashley by now. What? No, this makes no sense. Car 4 calling dispatch. Come in, dispatch. This is Officer Alan Mace. We hear you loud and clear, Alan. What's the report? Well, it's... It's the craziest thing, see? I'm on Gulch Road, just at the railroad crossing. Shouldn't you be an athlete? That's the point I'm trying to make, Dispatch. I should be, but I'm not. I somehow got turned around and ended up back in Hayes. How do you mean? There's only one road between Hayes and Ashley. Yes, and it's a straight road the whole way. I never turned around, never took any detours, and I somehow flipped directions. 104, report back to the station. Will do. Car 4 out. What is going on here? Oh, God. Come in. Come in. Chief, I got a call about... Save it, Peter. Shut that damn door. The noise is driving me up the wall. You all right, Chief? They've hardly stopped since this morning. All day. Since 7 a.m. Nothing but calls from Ashley. We can't even reach the damn town. We could always send another squad. Won't do any good. I sent seven of them out there in a proper convoy, and they all drove right back into town like Alan did. The road to Ashley has stopped leading to Ashley, and it's not even a roundabout road. Dad thought that maybe Alan had goofed. But I know the force is not made up of a bunch of meatheads. I know it doesn't make sense, Chief, but we have to do something. That's why I wanted to talk to you. We got a different sort of call. Apparently someone did try to leave Ashley. Hmm? What's that? I have the report right here. 8.17 p.m. from a Mrs. Elaine Cantor. She reported that her neighbors, Mr. and Mrs. Milton, and their two children, Jeffrey and Brooke, are missing. They attempted to leave town in the family car earlier in the evening and promised they would call her when they got to Hayes. So far, nothing. Hmm. No one's reported a car coming up the road either. Ugh. So what do we do? Hell if I know. Regardless, there's not much we can do about it tonight. You can head home if you want. Uh, Sure, Chief, if you say so. Morning, Pete. Took you long enough. Hey, I was on patrol. Someone's gotta take care of our town while the rest of you sit around answering phones. Uh, What are you doing out here? (laughs) You know how the Chief feels about my smoking inside. He won't even tolerate it today. Told me I needed to go out here if I wanted one. He hasn't had his coffee yet, then. I've seen him drain two cups already, actually. He's pretty shook up. We all are. The calls are really starting to spook me, especially after what happened on the road yesterday. Really? What's the latest from Ashley? Folks are saying the sun never came up. What? Yep. The town's in total darkness. Or so the reports go. I don't get it. This is a mess. Why don't we call someone? Who would we call? I don't know. The army? The government? This is bigger than us, Alan. I don't know why they keep reaching out to us, even. These people have much better options than us. You're telling me. But the reports from the rest of the boys go that the residents have tried calling other numbers, but we're the only place they can reach via phone. All other lines are dead. Maybe because we're so close. Great. An absolute nightmare. I think the chief has started putting calls through, though, looking for help. Well, that's good. Any luck? So far, he's only managed to request a helicopter from Topeka to fly over the region. (sighs) Ah, swell. At least it's something. That was a while ago. Maybe there's been an update. Hmm. I'll go check. What do you mean you don't see a goddamn town? I gave you very specific coordinates. Are they hiring blind pilots now, or are you some sort of... No luck? I 
think the chief needs his space right now. Ugh. And it was so quiet, too. Hayes Police Department, if this is an Ashley, Kansas call, please know that we're doing all we can. Please be as clear and concise as possible. Uh, hello, I'd like to report. Ma'am, please state your full name. Uh, Phoebe Danieleski. It's, it's about my daughter, Erica. She... Ma'am? Uh, sorry, my daughter has been behaving strangely. Uh, I don't know if you've been telling people to stay inside, but she keeps staring out the window, trying to talk to her father. Well, ma'am, speaking as a father myself, I can imagine she's going stir-crazy inside. Uh, her, her father, my husband, died three years ago. A drunk driving accident. Is, is there someone else in the house with you? No, but she's talking as if he were there with her, and pauses like, like she's listening. I called because she's been trying to go outside. I'm trying to find ways to stop her, but she's catching on. Ma'am, you need to remind her that until there's a change, going outside is extremely dangerous. I know, but she's insistent. She says she wants to join him. Join who? I don't know. It's so dark outside, I can hardly see a thing. This is insane. I... Erica? Erica, stop! I told you! Ma'am? Damn it all. And that was yesterday. We had 329 calls over the next 12 hours describing similar behavior with other children. Right. The missing children reports didn't start until this morning, and now they won't stop. We've had 421 calls already. All of Ashley's children just up and disappeared in the middle of the night. They're begging us for help, Chief. They're screaming at us and asking why we can't do anything. What are we supposed to tell them? Tell them the truth. We have to now. I, I even tried sending Langley out there on foot. Told him he had to walk the whole damn way, and he still got spit out back in Hayes. There's nothing we can do except talk to them and try to petition someone else to help. Still nothing there? It's like no one outside gives a damn. I've been getting in touch with every agency I could think of, and I keep hitting walls. For now, boys, we stick to our rhetoric. No one, under any circumstances, is to leave their homes, even to go looking for missing children. Got it. Make sure the rest of the boys know it too, alright? I've got to keep at the contacts here. Four days of this, Pete. I know. I can't even reckon how scared those people must be. If anything like that happened to Maisie, I'd... We're doing our best, Alan. We're not far from Ashley at all, though. What if... What if whatever's happening in Ashley comes here too? What if suddenly we're engulfed in darkness and no one can reach us from the outside, hmm? What if my daughter disappears? Alan, Alan, hey, it won't happen here. How do you know? Thought so. I'm not taking any chances. I'm getting my family and we're going away until this blows over. Denise's mother should take us in. But we're struggling to cover things as is. We need you here. My mind's made up, Pete. I'm sorry. I'm gonna talk to the chief, but regardless what he says, I gotta do this. I gotta keep my family safe. All right, fine. Just do what you feel is right. Hold on. Hayes Police Department? Well, this is Scott. Scott Luntz, uh, calling in from Ashley. Well, there seems to be some sort of fire. Okay, sir. If you could be as detailed as possible. Yep, I'll try. So I get up this morning. At least I think it was morning. It's hard to tell. Everything's still pitch black. Anyway. I figured it'd be like this all day, but just now I noticed a glow in the sky to the south, bright red and orange, kind of flickering. I looked out my window and I swear I can see fire in the distance, a big one way off, and it's growing. Alright sir, is it getting closer? Uh, no, not growing closer, far as I can make out. It's climbing. I, I mean, I can see the flames growing in higher into the sky. What should I do? Stay inside for now, sir. What if it starts moving north? Sir, we don't fully understand the condition of what's happening right now, and until we do, it's best for you to stay in your home and make no attempt to leave unless absolutely necessary. All right. I don't want to die, officer. Please do something. At least pray for us, if nothing else. I'll... We're doing all we can, sir. Trust me. Hey, Alan. <clears throat> so long, Alan. It's past midnight, Peter. You can go home if you want. No thanks, Chief. I'd rather stay. Keep up with everything. Ella might have had the right idea, even if I told the bastard he couldn't leave. We need all the hands on deck, Peter. 
I'll have his badge. I know, sir. I just feel useless here. I bet he did too. <sighs> Don't we all? At least we're doing something. Not like those finks in Washington. No one's taking this seriously, or they're not listening at all. I checked with some of the neighboring communities. No reports of a fire anywhere else. No witness accounts. Looks like this is another weirdo thing with Ashley alone. What do you think is happening, Chief? Honestly, this were everywhere. I'd say it was the end times. Armageddon. But it's only happening in Ashley. And we can't even see it for ourselves. Someone in Ashley must have pissed off something mighty fierce. Hmm. There's no logical way to wrap your head around any of this. You know what? I'll take this one. Sure. Hey, it's police department. Are you giving people the all clear yet to evacuate? Because I'm running. Now hold on, sir. Please state your name. It's Benjamin, okay? And what does it matter? The whole damn sky's on fire. It's like it's daylight out there again, but it's fire burning the sky. Calm down, you gotta give me details, Benjamin. I need to know what you see. If everything's lit up, can you see outside? You bet I can. It's like... What? Sir, what do you see? Uh, just hold on, wait. Yeah, yeah, I see something. It's true to south. It looks like... Sir, hello? Hello? Damn it. This is complete bull. Ugh. Chief? What the hell is happening to Ashley? I'll drive out there to see for myself if I gotta. Just sitting here isn't helping those people, and the phone isn't- Hey, Chief! What? The phones have stopped ringing! My god, so they have. So I take it the Chief was pretty steamed. He was, but I think he envies you a bit. He did try to drive, though. Tried three times. Got nowhere. I think the silence from Ashley is getting to him more than the calls were. At least we had some idea of what was happening. Well, at least he understands now. But really, nothing at all? Nope, it's been almost 48 hours since the last call and we've had nothing but the normal routine since then. <laughs> still makes me jump every time a phone rings, I tell ya. I'm surprised anyone there is still sticking around. Whatever's happening, it ain't right. You understand why I had to get away. You know I do. And that's why I want you to give my regards to Denise and Maisie. All right? I gotta get back to work. I will, Pete. Thanks. If this all blows over, I'll be back soon. Until then, take care. You too, buddy. Hayes Police Department? Hello? Yes! Yes, hello! Ma'am, who am I speaking with? My name is April. April Foster. <coughs> please, please help me, sir. What's happening, ma'am? Last night, they came back. Ma'am, I'm gonna need you to- Last night, they came back! <laughs> ma'am, I'm gonna need you to calm down and speak clearly. What happened? Who came back? Everyone. Everyone? They all came in the fire. What do you mean, everyone? My son. I saw my son last night. He was walking. He was walking down the street. He, he was burned. Jesus Christ, he was burned! Ma'am, I... He died last year. I raised him since he was a baby. It was just me. Him. I told him to watch for cars when he rode his bike, but he never wanted to listen. Ma'am, what you're saying isn't making any sense. You said everyone came back? Are you listening to me? Everyone! Everyone came back, everyone who died or went missing, they're back! And they're looking for us! He said, he said, Mommy, Volcano, see I can walk again. Where are you, Mommy? I, I want to see you! <laughs> Ma'am, where are you now? Are you safe? I, I'm hiding, just like everyone else. I saw them coming through the field, and some people opened their doors for them. God. I don't know what happened to them, but their houses got fire and they caved in. I have my curtains drawn. I'm hiding in the closet right now, and... Ma'am, is everything all right? Are you okay? Ma'am! Oh. Oh, my God. Ma'am? Something just came. Ma'am, stay.
stay as quiet as you can. Don't make a sound. Mommy? <laughs> he came inside. Stay absolutely still. Don't leave. Mommy? Where are you hiding? Stay quiet. I found you, Mommy. A magnitude 7.9 earthquake was measured by the United States Geological Survey shortly thereafter. The earthquake itself was felt throughout the state, in most of the Midwest, the epicenter directly under Ashley. The following morning, law enforcement officials on the Hayes Police Department arrived at the location of Ashley. A smoldering, burning fissure in the earth was all that remained. What cruel fate befell the people of Ashley, Kansas? And why? None can tell for certain, and perhaps it is best left that way. Life is full of little mysteries like that. <laughs> Until next we convene, pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Midnight Marinera is a monthly podcast written, produced, directed, and mixed by David King. This episode features the voice talents of TJ Dash, Michael Malconian, Nick Jewell, Matt Hawley, Emma Goddard, David King, and Sparrow Rain. The Disappearance of Ashley, Kansas is based on the original short story by CoasterKid93. Have we left a nasty, ghastly imprint on your all-too-fragile psyche and want to express it? Please feel free to leave feedback where you listen to this. Email us at midnightmarinera at gmail.com or follow us on Twitter or Tumblr. And hey, if you want to contribute a little extra to the show and open forbidden doorways to cryptic clues and riddles, consider becoming a patron and supporting our Patreon with a small monthly donation. Thanks for listening. <laughs>